what's up guys, Coach Bobby here. Happy Monday. This is the latest installment of my 45 till 45 video series where I tell you guys how I, how I live, how I, how I eat, how I train for 45 days leading up to my 45th birthday. All right, so today's, in today's installment, I'm gonna go over uh, my eating schedule uh, for Mondays, typical Mondays. Um, I'm gonna do this for the whole week, so Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Sunday, I'm going to give you an idea of exactly um, what I eat, when I eat, how I eat, and how I overlap that with how I train. And so the idea, the reason I can do that is because I have a habit, and I have a structure, and I have a routine. And so I recommend you guys do the same thing as far as your fitness. You have to make sure you create some routine around it, some habit around it. It won't just happen, right? So just like you schedule... You know, you make schedule arrangements for work and you structure your life around your school and you structure your life around and plan ahead for your kids' activities. You have, the same, have, you have to have the same approach when it comes to your fitness and your health. Otherwise, it won't happen, right? Especially in today's day and age. If you don't plan and structure your life and create routine around health and fitness, it won't happen. So that's how I can tell you uh, what a typical Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday looks like is because I know I have a structure and a routine, all right? So Mondays, Mondays, all right? So we are uh, 22 days out, right? 23 days out, uh, October 2nd. Uh, and today I'm going to go over a typical Monday. So a typical Monday for me is a training day, right? And I've talked about it before. The most critical day of the week for your health and fitness is Monday, Right, because most of us have have fun on the weekends, right? We enjoy the weekends, <clears throat> which means we intake more glucose and we deplete less glucose, right? Which means our glycogen glucose stores are at their highest coming into Monday. So if we don't get rid of that glycogen and glucose, our bodies are not in position to burn fat, right? So our body composition is less likely to change. Uh, for that week, if we don't approach Mondays the correct way. And as I've always said to people, we only have 52 weeks in a year. So if we're trying to make changes in our lives, in our body composition, drastic changes, we have to, we have to make sure we don't waste any of those weeks. And if we go into it uh, and waste a Monday, we've already wasted Saturday and Sunday. And most weeks we waste and give away Saturday and Sunday. So if we give away Monday, that's already three out of seven days that we can't win. And so the odds of us winning that week are very low if we don't win Monday. So, uh, so Mondays are critical, right? Very important. So having said that, Mondays are, are my training day. So I train Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right? And then I train either Saturday or Sunday. That Monday, Wednesday, Friday coincides with my work day, my class days. So I'm up early on Mondays, right? I'm up at 4 a.m. First thing I do Monday mornings, is I, every morning, is have water. Right, water does two things. It gets everything moving in your body, gets all your systems going, and if you have it cold enough, it will actually have your body uh, burn calories from the get-go because it has to regulate body temperature. So I recommend having water, cold or room temperature, first thing in the morning, every morning, right? 20 to 24 ounces of water, right? So I do that first thing in the morning, 4, 4, 4 15 a.m. I immediately have uh, a ketone drink, my exogenous ketones that many of you have heard me talk about, right? I have that immediately at 4.15. That's going to give me an immediate fuel source, right? In the very beginning, my body craved glucose like yours probably does. This gives you an immediate fuel source that will remove the biological or physiological need for glucose. Now, you still have mental cues and habits to break, but as far as your body needing glucose, having the ketones in your system eliminates your body's need for glucose. That should help you not have glucose in the early hours of the Monday, okay? Again, the idea is we're trying to get rid of the glucose. So we don't want to put any more in. We're trying to get rid of it, all right? So first thing in the morning, I have my water. 4.15, I have my ketones, right? That should take me out for several hours, right? Three, four, five hours of not being hungry and of having a a uh, sustainable, even kill energy, right? Opposite of what the glucose and the spikes and valleys that they give you, all right? So, but to make sure 
I get through the morning without being hungry, having energy, without any risk of muscle breakdown, right? Which can happen if you if you go low carb and low and low nutrients, right? Your body will resort to finding fuel somewhere. But uh, the ketones should take me out. But to make sure that I get out far enough, right? And I'll go over that in a minute. I have a bulletproof coffee next. So 4.15 a.m., I have my ketones. As I leave the house, I make my wife and me some coffee. What's called bulletproof coffee. That's fat-induced, fat-aided, fat-intensive, if you will, coffee, right? So my version, there's many versions. If you Google it, you'll find many versions. My version is simple, right? I use instant coffee, but you can brew it. I add to that one to two tablespoons of MCT, which stands for medium chain triglycerides, right? It's a fat your body can quickly convert to energy or XCT oil, right? So one to two tablespoons of MCT oil, right? One to two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, right? Not whipped cream, heavy whipping cream. Some use half and half. Some people use vitamin D milk. Some use butter, right? Some fat source that's going to give your body a fuel source that it can tap into once the ketones begin to wear out or, or get used up, all right? So one to two tablespoons of MCT or XCT oil, one to two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. This is my, this is my recipe, right? And then I'll add some Splenda for taste and or some low sugar, not low fat, creamer right? I like hazelnut and vanilla, right? So I'll add that to my coffee, right? So that's a coffee that has fat in it, but no carbohydrates, right? So I have my, and I have that between 5.30 and up to about 9.30, right? So we have my 4.15 ketones, right? As I leave the house at 5.30 or so, I'll, I'll make my coffee. I'll sip that coffee for several hours. Again, I'm gone on Mondays, doing my classes, my boot camp classes. So I, I have four classes in the morning, 6 a.m. through 10 a.m. So I'll sip my coffee throughout my morning classes, right? Several hours, okay? So I'm giving my body a constant drip of fuel, right? We, we, we think too much about meals, right? Our bodies just need fuel. We don't need food necessarily, we need fuel, right? We're animals, so we need fuel to, to survive. We don't need to sit down and have a bagel necessarily or cereal or eggs and bacon or a steak. Our bodies need fuel. And so we give our bodies fuel, they survive and thrive. If not, they, they crave fuel, right? So by giving my body ketones in the morning and then giving it bulletproof coffee, I've given my body enough fuel to last several hours, all right? From 4 a.m. when I got up until about 9.30 a.m. or longer. Right now at 9:30 a.m., right midway through my last class, I begin. I, I finish the coffee off or save it for later, right? And I begin having what's called a BCA drink, right? Or branch chain amino acids. Okay, amino acids are what your body breaks down protein into. They're the building blocks that are created after you eat chicken or beef, right? Your body uses those building blocks for a lot of things. But for us, what's most important is it uses amino acids for muscle repair and muscle building, right? So I'm going to work out at about 1030. So I begin the process of giving my body the building blocks it needs to repair and build muscle before my workout starts. So about 930, I'll begin my BCA drink to get my body prepped for the muscle breakdown I'm going to be doing in about an hour, right? The muscle tissue breakdown that workouts do, all right? That also will prevent my body from craving energy, right? When your body's fatigued or muscles get broken down, your body will crave food in order to get the BCAs or the or amino acids it needs to repair muscles. So if you give your body amino acids via a drink, your body won't crave food to provide those same uh, amino acids, right? So that's one more step, one more bridge that's gonna allow you to extend what I call my quasi-fasting window, 
right? The window for, in which you're giving your body no glucose, right? And allowing it to burn through that glucose and prep for fat burning, all right? So 415's ketones, right? After water. 5.30 to about 9.30, bulletproof coffee. 9.30, I begin my BCAs, right? And I'll sift that before the workout. I'll work out at about 10.15 or 10.30 to about noon, right? That time frame, right? Give or take 30 minutes, right? But I'll drink my BCA drink before and during that workout, all right? So the Monday workout, I won't go into, into too much detail, but that's, that's the one that I really get after it, right? It's the one that I'm trying to burn through all that glycogen, right? So, it's, so because by nature of our lifestyles, that, that's the day of the week I have the most glycogen to burn through. It's Monday is the day of the week that I do the most power output activity. So all my heavy lifting is on Mondays. All my extreme and challenging cardiovascular, high intensity, high intensity cardiovascular activity is done on Mondays. So my sprints, my box jumps, my burpees, my squats, my deadlifts, my heavy, heavy chest presses, my TRX, all that stuff I do that's hard and difficult and challenging, I do on Mondays for sure. Again, trying to create the most power output to get rid of the glycogen. All right? So, so I take the BCAs. I train like crazy on Mondays, right? And then after my workout, around 12 o'clock, I head off to my corporate account. So I have a 12 o'clock boot camp on Mondays as well. So I have, I have classes from 6 to 10, right? I work out from 10.15 or 10.30 to about 11. I'm sorry, to about 12. I, I have another class from 12 to 1. So I'll finish off my BCAs after the workout, right? After my, after my workout during my noon class that I coach, that I teach, right? If I'm not going to work out again. Sometimes I will double up if I ate more than I wanted to and need some more depletion. I'll finish up a little bit after my noon class. So I'll go 1030 to noon. I'll teach 12 to 1. And then I'll train a little bit more after my noon class, right, to get some more depletion. If I do that, I'll save some of the BCAs for my post, for my second workout, if you will, all right? If not, I'll just finish my BCAs during my class, all right? In any of those cases, right, I leave either earlier or a little bit later and go home, right? If I get home in time before my kids get out of school, I'll have some food at that point, or I'll just take a nap quick nap. If not, I'm heading, I'm heading home just in time to get my kids from school, right? In either case, I eat my first food at about between 2.30 and 3.30, right? 2.30 or 3.30 is the first time I eat any real food on any day, okay? On, 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 on Mondays for sure. And so the question is, what do I eat at that point, okay? Now I'm at a point where I eat even then, on most days, on most Mondays, on most training days, which is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, even then I will eat a high protein or high to, high to, mid to high protein and mid to high fat, no carb meal, right? Even, even on the days I train when your body can actually use some carbohydrates. And, and at the worst, you know, the, the risk of, of storing it as fat is lower. Right now, even even on, even even with that on on my training days, I'll have almost no carbs. Right at that meal. However, when I first started this process, I had, like many of you, a dependency on carbohydrates and sugar. So, in the beginning, I made sure if I was going to eat some carbohydrates, and I was craving something that I wanted to have, I had it on the days I trained. So even now, if I have a craving or I want to make sure I don't get a craving for, for carbohydrates, for bread, for rice, for pasta, I'll make sure that I do it on a Monday, right? On a day I train extra hard or a Wednesday, on a, but for sure on a workout day. And I'll have it as close to the workout as possible, right? Again, because if I'm going to have it eventually and I, and, I, so, and I really don't subscribe to just eliminating carbs, it's too hard and it's no fun, right? So if we're going to have carbs, which we are, 
then we're best suited to strategize when to have those, right? And if you have them in periods where your body's least likely to store it as body fat, that's better. So when, I, when I'm craving something, um, and in the beginning, I mean, it was like Almond Joys or sandwiches or, or rice or pasta. Uh, I made sure I had that close to my workout, right? To make sure that I had it in a, in a, in a state of my body that was high fuel usage, right? After a workout, we've discussed this before, talking about the afterburn effect, the epoch effect. So on that meal, when I get home between two and three, right? I'll have protein for sure, right? And if I'm craving carbs, I'll have some carbs, right? However, if I have the carbs, I'll try not to have as much fat with it. So I'm going to do either fat, medium fat, bacon, avocado, cheese. Um, I'll have either that or carbs. I won't do both, right? And the problem with our society, the reason we've gotten obese is not because of fat. It's because of fat in conjunction with carbs. So when we have a Big Mac, the fat in the Big Mac is bad because of the carbohydrates. So our body will use glucose when it's available, right? It will use fat only if it has to. So when we have a high a diet, high in carbohydrates, our body always has carbs to, to use. And so it stores all the fat because it never uses it. So when I come home, I'll have protein for sure. And I'll have either the fat, the cheese, the avocado, uh, the bacon, the sausage, the ham, or I'll have carbohydrates. Right, egg sandwich or eggs and bacon, right? Not both necessarily, unless I've really, really trained hard and I know I'm going to burn through uh, any glycogen or glucose that I eat, right? And I will also make sure that if I do have carbs, that most of the food of the item that I eat, that most of it is not carbs. So the ratio of carbohydrates to other is low. So for example, if I have a sandwich, It'll, number one, it'll be on a, a healthier version of the, of the carbohydrates. So instead of white bread, it's whole grain bread. Instead of brown, white rice, it's whole grain or brown rice. Instead of white pasta, it's whole grain pasta, right? So number one, I'll have a healthier version of the, of the um, carbohydrates to reduce the insulin response. And, 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 the, uh, and the odds of being hungry again in 30 minutes. Number two, I'll make sure that the other items on the dish, on the plate, are, are protein, right? So I'll have a sandwich with a lot of meat in it, right? I'll have spaghetti with a little bit of pasta, maybe mixed in with some zucchini spiral, and a lot of meat on top of it. So I'm maximizing the amount of other items, namely protein, and minimizing the amount of carbohydrates, right? That's going to reduce the spike in insulin and reduce the amount uh, or, or, or the odds that I'll be hungry again in a few minutes, all right? So I'll have that when I get home around, around 3 o'clock, right? And so now I've had my first meal of the day. I was satiated and sustained for 14 to 16 hours, right? That's the goal, right? You want to you you extend the window that you are not giving your body glycogen or glucose, sorry, glucose, right? You want to extend the window by, by sleeping, obviously, by having water and ketones, and then by having some fat, right? Some, some bulletproof coffee. And then if you're working out, giving your body some BCAs. All those things serve to extend the amount of time your body has no glycogen or glucose coming in, right? No glucose coming in, right? Meanwhile, you've worked your butt off in the gym and you've burnt through some of that, um, hopefully much of that glycogen and glucose, right? Leaving your tank almost empty. Now, if you go home and you're craving something, you could put a little bit back in, right? But you want to be careful, not too much, because you want to get into a position the following day, Right, the burn day, that's when we burn fat, the day after workout. We don't burn fat during workouts. That, that's a fallacy. We burn fat between workouts. So now we're trying to get to our body into position where on our day off, 
our body has no more glycogen and now we can go right into fat burning right so if we if we give our body some glucose some carbohydrates we have to make sure we do it in a state where our body's burning through some of it right after a good workout and not too much where our body has too much the following day and can't burn through it okay so that being said, now we have a window between 3 o'clock and bedtime that can be anywhere between 6 and six, six and 8 hours for some people, right? For me, it's about 6 hours. So 3 o'clock, 3.30, I have my meal. Now, usually mid, you know, early evening, I go somewhere. You know, my kids have practice. I might have a, a client I'm training, uh, something. So rather than go out into the world and be vulnerable to eating something and getting hungry, I make sure I, I prep and strategize and preempt this, this vulnerability by having a high protein, maybe high fat snack. Nuts are my go-to, right? Pecans, walnuts, almonds, um, those are my go-to, right? Beef jerky, you know, slices of, of, of lunch meat, you know, items that, you know, boiled eggs, Items that are quick that you can have that are that are no low, very very low to no carbs, high in protein that are gonna satiate you and keep you from giving in to temptation, right? So when, now when you're driving home from practice, you're not gonna go through that drive-through to get some hamburgers and fries, right? You can get home in time without having to be susceptible to eating junk food, right? Going to the vending machine or whatever. All right, so that's like around. 6 or 6.30 as I'm heading out to my, to practice or to this, you know, training, whatever it is, right? So that leaves me really about three more hours to get through, right? Without giving my body any more glucose. Now it's going to be dinner, my last meal, right? So again, for many people, that's, that's, that's the riskiest of meals, right? Because you're cooking for someone else probably, husband, wife, children, Right? So the environment that you're in is usually or oftentimes an environment that might not be on the same page as you are, right? low, low to no carb. So you're at risk of, of eating a fry off your kid's plate or adding some rice to your plate as you make your kid's dish. So until you're strong enough, right? in the beginning, I suggest that if we do have carbs, again, I would prefer we, we, we go low to no carb as fast as possible, as often as possible. Not always, but as often as we can during the week. We're trying to maximize the time spent in fat burning mode. But in the beginning, if we're gonna have carbs, because we've been craving them for 30, 40 years, right? Have them on the days you train. So on some Mondays, right, like this, like this day, on some Mondays, I will have some carbs at my dinner, still. Right? There's no use fighting against an, a craving you have. Right? The better chance you have is making sure you have that craving, eat it in a time where your body's less likely to store it as fat. Right? And that is on a training day for sure, and then if possible, closer to the training window. So maybe if you're going to have a dinner party on a Monday, you train later, or you train, train twice, or you train in the morning and then fast until the dinner. Right, so I suggest you have high protein for sure at this last meal, right? And then fat, right? But if you are craving some carbs, then then do as we do at lunchtime, right? Do a healthier version of the carb, right? Eliminate or reduce the fat associated with that meal. Again, don't do both, right? And then make sure we do that minimally, not every single Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, in my case, but occasionally, right? And then if you do that, don't do it for the for the for the early afternoon and the dinner. Right? Do one of them. Like in my case, I wouldn't do carbs at my first and second meal. I would choose one of them. Right? Choose one of them. So that's my strategy, guys. What I do. I do water and keto in the morning. I do bulletproof coffee. I do my BCAs around my workout. And then I really have two meals, right? 2.30 or 3 and around 8.30 or 9, right? At which I have high protein and may or may not have carbohydrates, 
right? But only on training days, right? I won't do that same approach on a day I'm trying to burn fat, which is the days after the workout, all right? And then in between that window, my, my, that three o'clock meal and that 9.30 meal, I'll have a snack usually that's high in uh, protein and fat, all right? So hope that was helpful. Um, and if you have questions, as always, feel free to post or ping me. Uh, but that's my every Monday schedule for the most part. You know, I deviate sometimes, occasionally, but again, it's about routine. That's my routine, and I stick to it. I have for several months, maybe even years, um, and it has worked. So find what works for you, uh, get a routine, get a habit uh, set up, and you'll see success. All right, guys, any questions, please feel free to ping me. I love you guys, and have a great day. BTY.